Till I could feel how sta- <laughs> <laughs> Woo, okay, we're gonna tell me if we're gonna pass a boner, all right. <laughs> It's Jessica and welcome back to Pinewood Island. So in the last episode, uh, we found out our teacher's a dumbass. So we are a group of students here on a school trip to get extra credit for the program. But unfortunately, the teacher is an alcoholic and decided, hey, let's party on the beach. He got way too drunk, tried to assault our character. And after she freaked out, went back to her room, fell asleep. Uh, all the students woke up to Susan, the TA, screaming, and now the teacher is murdered. We don't know what happened. He was stabbed multiple times, but there you go. So we're going to figure out what happened because I want to talk to Matt more specifically because when we were searching the rooms, he found blood in our room. I don't really suspect our character of doing anything. I suspect someone coming into a room, but I don't know why. I needed to do something, but what? I started to feel hungry, so first I would need to eat. After getting out of bed, I headed down to the dining room. As I walked downstairs, I saw Matt. He pulled me aside into an empty common room. It was time to discuss that blood. Look, I know you didn't kill him. Even if you did, who would blame you after he coherent you like that? Glad you didn't think I did it. But why is there blood in my room? I'm not sure. You didn't cut yourself or anything, did you? No. Is it possible whoever killed him was in your room that night? My heart dropped. I hope not. Maybe it isn't even blood. It could be something else. I shrugged. I have no idea what to say. At least Matt believes us. I'm glad because I want to romance him, but I'm glad that he believes us. Thank God. If the murder was in your room, be careful, okay? I nodded, not trusting myself to speak. My throat felt like it was full of sand. I made some instant oatmeal and sat on the table alone. I hate having nothing to do. It was incredibly frustrating. There had to be something better than just sitting around and waiting. What should I do? Deal with the body, keep everyone calm, look for- I'm gonna look for clues, I don't care. Like, I don't wanna de like, I don't wanna deal with the body. Like, I know we're- I decided to keep the body in the house because just for evidence purposes, but like, I don't think trying to calm everyone down is gonna work either because everyone's just like, freaked out. I think we actively need to do something to figure out who killed him. I'm still hoping it's nobody in this house, but my money is on Ray, unfortunately. As a nice guy as he is, sometimes the nicest people are actually the villain of the story, so that's who I think is the murderer. I didn't find anything of interest. The day is over, so I decided to call a night. I was tired, probably from the nightmares. I had fallen asleep, so the sound of the house creaking and distant crying from either Susan or Mary. It was a new day. I covered my eyes and groaned. What now? Some of the others might be holding some kind of class in the lab. A few were probably trying to pass the time in the common room with the old board game. So then, what did I want to do? I kind of wanted to stay in bed and just wait for the trip to be over. It would make the others worry though, so I thought I really should try to do something. Did I want to pretend that I was interested in plants or board games? Let's go to the common room. Like, I know we're here for a school credit, but like, how can you think about it when your teacher just got murdered and his dead body is still in the house? I head to the common room and saw Matt, Ray, and Joey. They were playing Scrabble. Who's winning? Me. I think he's cheating. We're almost done with this game if you want to play next. Sure. I'm not cheating. How could I not win against uh, the word rat and lime? I looked at the board and saw that it scattered a mixture of small words and large words. There was even quickly. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Or I placed down a few letters in the word equal to create equalize. You had a Z the whole time? Let's just start a new game so just can suffer with us. I'd rather not play actually. Can we play something else? Yeah, I'd love to play. Can we play something else? <laughs> Maybe we can play a different game? I'm not a big fan of Scrabble. I know a couple of card games. I don't really care either way. Matt looked annoyed, but didn't object. We went through some of the card games and checked out the other board games. I actually had a lot of fun, and a lot of stress that I held for this morning seemed to go away. Came back later that night and I head to my room. At least I was able to distract myself during the day. The day is over, so I decided to call in a night. These days are going by so fast, but then again we have like four weeks to stay here before we can get help. Like, how stupid is that? There's no cell service or internet. Like, I don't understand this. What should I do now? Spend time with someone, keep everyone calm. Let's spend time with someone. Who did I want to spend time with? Matt, honestly, I want to spend time with Matt because he doesn't think we killed someone, but, and he's also into crime. 
Like, remember the books he was reading? He's into true crime and stuff, so he might know something. I hope he's not the one who did it. <laughs> I head up to the lab for some peace and quiet and found Matt sitting there, book in hand. Oh, hey Matt. Hey. I can go. Or you can stay. What are you reading? Matt set the book down and looked up at me. I'm not even sure. With everything going on, I can't concentrate. The words don't stick in my mind. We could go, you get drunk instead. No, there's no point getting in drunk. That's how someone died. So we'll just say, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. It's hard to take it all in. You know, I think I'm going to take a nap. Okay, rest well. Thanks. The day's over, so I decide to call it a night. Just rolling up. Whoa! I am jolted awake by a commotion coming from downstairs. Not again. I wish I could just ignore it, but I couldn't. I kicked off the blanket and set it out. All the traces of sleep were gone, and my heart was racing. Oh god, what's happening now? I hear people fighting downstairs as soon as I get to the hallway. Apparently, I was the last one awake. Everyone was arguing, but I wasn't sure what and why. Mary, please calm down. There are so many reasons why that can't work. Mary looked at a little shaken. What's going on? Murray wants us to try swimming to the mainland. Are you insane, woman? These sh there's sharks in the water. You want to die that badly? What? You can't do this. It's too far away. I'm not. I'm a really good swimmer. I can see the land on the beach. I'll just swim towards it until I get there. Don't be crazy. It's too cold to swim. You'll freeze to death before you get anywhere. I shook my head and looked to the others for answers. How could she possibly think swimming to the mainland was a good idea? We could try to build a raft. That's a better idea. I don't think we have the right supplies for that. And I don't know how to build one, do you? That will that will take too long. I can't living in this mansion. I can't keep living in this mansion. I have to get out of here. Mary, please, the ocean isn't safe around here. Don't you remember all the warnings we received? Mary started to tear up, but it only seemed to make her angrier. Of course I remember! Wait, there's an inflatable raft in the greenhouse. It's old, but maybe it could work? Why didn't you say this earlier? I forgot. The waters are rough. I'm not sure that's safe. It's better than nothing. I have to try. I'll go get it, okay? Yo, Mary's gonna die then! Are you insane? I'm not sure this is a good idea. What if the currents carry you out to sea? You might actually be able to make it. Maybe someone should go with you. I'll go. Jesse, you don't have to. It's too dangerous. If it's dangerous for me, then it's dangerous for you. I'm going. Dude, they're both gonna die. It'll only fit one person. Then, then I'll go. Mary, you stay here. If something happens, I have a better chance of swimming than you. I was a lifeguard and a swimmer. I'm the best person for this. If something does happen, I have a better chance of making it back. She's right, Jesse. She seemed calmer, but there was a stiffness of her now that I imagined was determination. We carried the raft outside to the beach while Jesse and Mary continued to argue. Oh no, are we really gonna do this? I mean, we have no choice, but like, I, it seems like a terrible idea. How far is the mainland too? Like, how many hours did it take for them to get here by boat? We stood on the beach and watched Carl and Mary inflate the smell raft with the air pump. Susan left to get food and water for Mary to take with her. No one had any idea how long it would take to actually reach the mainland. It was a long, uh, it was a long ride on the chatterboat, but it was a small raft with a single paddle. Okay, guys, wish me luck. Please let me go instead. No, Jesse, I'm the best one to go. I'm not discussing it with you anymore. There wasn't a life bus anywhere. Are you sure you want to go out there? Don't worry, guys. I'll send for help as soon as I get there. And then she dies and we never hear from her again. <laughs> Everyone fell silent as Mary waded into the ocean to get onto her raft. She gave us a short wave and started to paddle out. My feet felt stuck in the sand and I watched her get further and further out. I did notice her drifting left, but maybe it was just my imagination. I sat in the sand and looked at the others. Jesse was standing far enough to, at that the waves were hitting his feet. Ray sat beside me and soon the others did as well. She's not going very fast at all. She's fighting against the waves with one paddle on her own. Of course she isn't going fast. What were you expecting? Joey rolled his eyes and looked away. Suddenly, Susan started to point out towards Mary. Did you see that? Did anyone see that? I got on my feet and we all got closer to the water. What did you see? I swear I saw Finn. Oh no, the shark! Damn it, Susan, don't say shit like that. No, but maybe... She stopped and saw Mary Raft get a bump under beneath. The paddle slipped from her hand into the water. Luckily, it floated. Oh god. We started to yell at Mary, telling her to come back. The waves could push her back to the shore, couldn't they? The raft got bumped again. This time hard enough to almost knock Mary out of it. Jesse started to wade into the water. Mary was too far out, though. He would never make it. I watched Mary look down at the water and she saw the paddle. We have to do something. Come on! 
Matt started to wade into the water behind Jesse, and Carl and Ray followed. Susan looked at me, tears in her eyes. I can't swim! I can't either! I looked down at Joey, but he obviously had no intentions of getting into the water. Mary was starting to drift closer to the shore, but there was something in the water. What should I do? I, 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 oh my god. I feel like I should help. There's no, like, there's no point of us staying on the beach. Fuck it. I followed the others into the water. I couldn't just stand there on the beach and watch. Mary was trying to reach the paddle, but whatever was hitting her raft hit it again. And this time, it sent her to the water. <gasps> there were several feet between her and us. We called out for her to swim. I didn't want to think about what was in the water with us, and I started to lose footing. The water was getting deeper and deeper. The raft floated away, carried by the current. Mary, swim to us! Mary did, but she looked pale, and her movement seemed panic. That was when I saw it, a fin breaking the water behind her. She was jerked under the water once it then reappeared. Her eyes were large, and she was reaching out of the water around her. She tried to say something, but her voice was stuttering. The water was turning red around her. Oh! She got within feet of Jesse and reached, and he reached a hand out at her while trying to stay afloat. She was pulled in th under the water again and resurfaced with a look of terror and pain in her face. Jesse continued to swim towards her, but everyone else hesitated. I felt frozen, and without really thinking about it, I already started to move myself back to shore with gentle motions. She was pulled under again, and then she was above water. I heard a gurgling shrill noise from her. The guys reached for the guys reached her, and they moved her back to shore. Relief, I started to swim to the shore in earnest. Something grabbed my leg, and I was suddenly underwater. I realized that I fought up for air, and I reached to the surface as I, sh I searched for the water. I turned and saw the shark swimming away. It was a dark shape darting through the water. I looked down, and I couldn't see my leg. My body started to shake. I couldn't stop. What?! We lost our leg! <laughs> what?! <laughs> the dark shape came again, moving too fast. I tried to get away, but it was too fast. This time, I was hitting the torso. I punched and tore at the giant mouth that was cutting into me, swallowing the water in an attempt to scream. Then, my head was above water. I could take a breath, but my lungs didn't seem to be working. I realized I'm being pulled to shore. Someone had me. Are we dead? <laughs> I'm already dead! I picked the wrong choice, shit. You opened your eyes and saw the sky. You noticed faces. They all seemed blurry. Your body felt cold and heavy, and you couldn't stop your eyes from closing. Ray helped you to make it back to shore, but you died from blood loss on the beach, along with Mary. Cheer up, though. You earned the uh, drain death. The end. <laughs> uh, oh, man. I forgot that our character could die. Okay, let me try that again. Okay, this time we're gonna stay on the beach. <laughs> oh man, I didn't think I would die this early in the game. I stayed on the beach and watched the others try to reach her. Mary reached out for her paddle when something large broke the surface and she was gone. Susan screamed and I fell to my knees. We saw Mary resurface. The water was turning red. She was trying to swim towards Jesse and the others, but she was pulled under again, came back up for a few moments and pulled under again. When the guys reached her, they moved her to get back to shore. After everyone made it to shore, we saw what happened to Mary. An arm and one of her legs were gone. The other leg was only hanging by- Ugh. I turned away and began to gag violently. I covered my mouth and tried not to vomit. Her skin turned white or as the sand around her turned red. Nothing Susan or the others tried to stop the bleeding and her sobbing. Shrieking noises eventually fall silent. She was dead. See, what did I say? Like, what did Mary think was gonna happen? Like, you got on the raft and everything's fine? Like, you knew there were sharks in the water. What a freaking idiot. Everyone sat on the beach and Jesse sobbed over Mary. Eventually, Susan took him back to the mansion and the rest of us started to dig a shallow grave. The day is over, so I decided to call it a night. My god. So two are dead already. What should I do now? Spend I'm gonna spend time with Matt. Fuck this shit. While walking around the mansion, I took a peek into the lab and caught Matt there. Oh, it's you. Yeah. I can't read, my mind is too loud. I think I know what you mean. With everything that has happened, we're just so helpless. That's not completely true. We could hike around the island to see if our phone will pick up cell reception. I don't believe anyone has done that yet. Yeah, but if we go off the trail, we could get lost. So we could bring supplies. How big can this island possibly be? Bring a map and we'll be fine. Haha, <laughs> yeah, sure, we'll be fine. I guess we could. I'm not sure if I want to. I don't really want to go with anyone else. So if you stay behind, I'll just go alone. I'd really like you if you came with me, though. Hmm. Well, we'll probably be out there all day. It'll be good to get away from this place a bit, don't you think? So we can even camp out overnight. Matt was looking at me, waiting for an answer. Should I camp out in the woods or stay at the mansion? I'm gonna go with him. I don't want him to be alone just because I'm scared Matt will die next, but I don't think this is a good idea either. Just letting you guys know that. 
Okay, let's do it. Maybe there's a cell tower that reaches over one part of the island. That's exactly what I'm hoping for. Matt and I head downstairs to let others know that what we're planning. They were hesitant, but no one argued. Susan found a small tent and gave us the map to the island we had found. We grabbed a few other supplies, said goodbye to the others, and headed out. I was anxious, but also excited. Are you ready? No, but that's never stopping me before. I'm not an outdoorsy person. Look at me. Do I look like I am? Come on, I'll be fine. Hope so. We started to hike into the woods. Matt had fully charged his phone in hand. My cell was also fully charged, but turned off to save battery. Occasionally, we stopped to see if Matt could get a signal, but there was nothing so far. We started to top the trail, which made me nervous. I told myself it would be fine. The island wasn't too big and we had a map. Do you want to stop to rest? I'm fine, but you look a little pale. Matt tried to laugh, but he was out of breath, and it came out strained. Oh yeah, let's just stop for a second. I'm not very athletic, you know? I nodded and set my pack down. I took some water and offered it to him. Dehydration would not be a good thing out here. Yeah, yeah. He took a long drink of the water and handed it back to me. He didn't seem to be as positive as he was when we left. Is this getting to you a bit? Maybe a little. I've actually read a lot of survival stuff, but it's different being out here on your own. You get to experience bugs and sweat yourself. He looked away and caught his breath. I feel like I should say something. I get the feeling that this trip was not going as how we planned. This was your idea. I don't mind being out here with you. Maybe we'll be lucky and get eaten by wolves. <laughs> okay, I'll just say this for the sake of the romance part, but I honestly, I wanted to say, like, maybe we'll get eaten by wolves. I don't mind being out here if it's with you. Oh, I mean, <laughs> um, Matt looked away from me. I'm glad you came with me. I was hoping you would. I think you're the only one of the group who doesn't get on my nerves after a few minutes. Really? Why do you say that? Ray's weirdly quiet, Carl's a womanizer, Joey's an ass, Jesse can be a real crybaby, and Susan. Come on now, what's wrong with little Miss Sunshine? She's too cheerful. It's exhausting being around her for too long. Well, I guess I should feel pretty special then. You seem easy to annoy. Matt shrugged and looked away. We spent the next few hours making small talk as we walked through the woods. Time passed and we didn't get any cell signal. We walked all day until the sun started to go down. We stopped to find a good place to set up a tent. I was nervous about camping out, but walking back in the dark sounded worse. The tent was small but manageable. We got it to set up very quickly. I looked at it and then back at Matt and myself. How are, how are we both going to fit in the tiny thing? How would just one of us fit? How many people does this tent sleep? Three, supposedly. I can sleep outside if you want, I don't mind. Very noble at him, but what kind of a jerk would I be if I make him sleep outside? No, that's ridiculous. I I don't want- it's not that I want him in the tent because yeah, I'm ro I want to romance this a character, but like, I don't want him to die outside while I'm in the tent, you know what I mean? <laughs> we'll be fine sharing the tent. Hell, according to the tent people, we could squeeze another person in there. Yeah, well, it'll be a little tight, but I don't think I snore or anything. Well, that's a relief. It's actually getting kind of cold out. Good thing I brought an extra blankets. We'll be okay. Okay, I'm starving. Let's eat those sandwiches Susan made us. Okay. We ate quickly and crawled onto the tent. We didn't have the time or resources to build a campfire, so it was very dark out. Oh god. I tried not to notice how close Matt was, but I could hear his breathing and smell him. I wonder if he thought I was too close. Or maybe I smelled weird? It was cold, but I could also feel body heat re irradiating from him. Despite how tired my body was, I couldn't sleep. Matt? Yeah? Uh, why do you smell like oranges? <laughs> I couldn't see him, but I could sense him smirking. Maybe it was his tone. <laughs> Probably my shampoo. Is it bothering you? No, it's nice. Oh, okay, good. I bit my lip and tried not to feel so awkward. It didn't help, but I eventually managed to fall asleep. I woke up feeling warm and comfortable. Arms were wrapped around me, and I felt Matt's body pressed against mine. What should I do? Hmm. He pulled closer to me and seemed to be waking up. Shit, things were about to get really awkward. <laughs> Good morning! I said way too cheerfully. Hmm, oh, oh, uh, oh shit, sorry. He, re he released me and scooted away. I rolled over to look at him, but he was sitting up and not meeting my gaze. He got out of the tent and, fall and I followed after him. It's okay, it wasn't bad or anything. At least we kept each other warm. Very true, it was cold last night. We probably... Yeah. It was nice, actually, but it felt weird to say that now. I'll pack the tent. Okay, so nothing weird happened? We walked around the island a bit longer before heading back to the mansion. Our mission had failed, but I didn't feel all that bad about it. Matt was nice company, and it had been nice to have a purpose. After we got back to the mansion, we updated the others on our fortunate news. No one seemed surprised. The day was over, so I decided to call it a night. I started to stumble downstairs for breakfast. I really could use a big cup of coffee. It was so hard to get any decent sleep now. Jessica, we're going on a hike if you want to come. Please come. It's only rained Carl so far. I'm not sure. I don't really feel like hiking. 
I think the others are planning to play something in the common room. You could hang out with them if you don't feel like coming with us. Hike or more board games? I wasn't sure I was really up to doing either. I should really try to stay busy though. Hanging out in my room just made me feel depressed. We'll stay at the board game. Sorry, Ray. Like, I like you, but I'm kind of suspicious of him. <laughs> the last thing I wanted to do is go out on a hike, so I headed to the common room. Matt and Joey were playing checkers, and it seemed that Joey was winning based on the sour expression on Matt's face. What are you watching, Jesse? Yeah, I, I, I play the winner. Or me, or, or me and you could play right now. I think there's another set. Sure, let's see if we can find it. Jesse and I play a much more laid-back game of checkers. Jesse won, and then Jesse and Matt switched. The room got considerably more tense than when Joey and Jesse faced off. They hardly spoke. They slammed the pieces down on the board as they played. I looked at Matt, but he only shrugged. Alright, I'm done with this. What? Be because you're losing? No, this is dull. I don't want to play this stupid game. You think you're better than us or something? Did I say that? Come on guys, why don't we try a different game? No, but thanks. Why is Joey such a dick? <laughs> Joey left without another word. I then listened to Jesse complain about Joey for the- uh, for about an hour before giving up and going to my bedroom. It was a bit early, but oh well. The day is over, so I decided to call it a night. Hey, let's spend time with someone. I don't know if we should look for clues, like, I don't know. I walked into the dining room and saw Matt sitting on a notepad with a notepad on the table. What's up? The sky? Uh, clever? <laughs> I'm <laughs> trying to piece everything together. After exploring the island, I can't imagine anyone but one of us killed the professor. Oh, that's depressing. <laughs> so then who? Why? Everyone else seems content to let the police figure that out. Well, I'm not everyone. Matt ran a hand through his hair and looked back down at the notebook. It was full of doodles and illegible scribbles. Okay, fill me in. How about you take a break? Hey, uh, he seems very passionate about this because he's so into like the true crime stuff, so I'll just be like, hey, fill me in. Okay then, fill me in. Who killed Professor Kent? I don't know yet. He pointed to the seat next to him and I took looked over his notes. I couldn't make anything out. His handwriting was terrible. We know that Susan fought with him the night he was killed. Yeah, but Susan? She's... I know. Do any of the others have a motive? Well, Mary and Carl were part of the biology program, so it's possible they knew Professor Kent prior to the trip. Maybe that's why Mary was so desperate to leave. Guilt. I'll never know, I guess. Okay, then there's Carl. I can't think of a motive for him, though. I guess so. Joey's a jerk, but is he capable of murder? I don't think it's Joey. Like, I think Joey's the red herring because he's such a dick. Like, usually, I feel like in horror situations, the, the asshole of the group is usually not the, the killer. He's the red herring to make you think he is. And I think that's Joey. Maybe the no-winner thing drove him to it. I suppose it's possible. What about you? Have you learned anything new? Share what you learned with Matt. Don't- uh, I want to trust Matt. I feel like I can trust him. Hope I'm not making the wrong decision. Oh, God. Oh, this is what I know so far. There was blood in my room. Could the murderer have come into a room while I slept? Or was it just an old stain? I don't have any other clues. Okay, so... You have a theory? I do not. So... I need a drink. Want one? <laughs> the kind with alcohol in it? Of course. Then yes. I went to the kitchen and returned with two glasses of clear liquid. This isn't pure vodka or something, is it? <laughs> no, just try it. You'll like it. Okay. It was sweet, frizzy, and had a bite. You mix vodka with clear soda? Yup. I laughed and we both looked down at Matt's notes. We spent hours coming up with the idea who might have done it and why. The theories started to be plausible, but as we drank, they became more out outlandish. Matt started to sit closer to me. Woo! <laughs> Matt placed a hand on my knee and looked at me. His face was a little flustered from the alcohol. You- you're my favorite person. He seemed so serious yet intoxicated, I put a hand on his shoulder to steady him. I'm fond of you too. I really want to kiss you. What the hell? <laughs> Matt! <laughs> he looked less drunk now. He leaned closer to me. You do? Can I? <laughs> like, I literally like Matt's character, but is this really the time to be doing this? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna say yes. Yes. Oh, but what the hell are you doing, Matt? <laughs> Matt gave me a goofy smile and leaned closer to me. He kissed me and it was a little sloppy. We were both a bit drunk. I was laughing and kissing him back. He moved forward and fell out of his chair. Shit. I moved down to the floor and kissed him again be between giggles. Everything seemed really warm and fuzzy and hilarious right now. It was a good feeling. Matt tasted like vodka. He pulled away and looked at me. 
Jessica, you're gonna make me fall in love with you. What the heck? <laughs> he paused for a moment, Blake then pulled away. Perhaps he hadn't meant to say that. Just let's sober up a bit. Sounds good. We got some snacks from the kitchen and ate. We joked, laughed, and Matt put an arm around me. Overall, it was a great day. Like, I want to like this, like, that we're getting to know Matt and, like, start a relationship him, but your teacher is dead in the house. His body is still there. Also, Mary just died too. Like, are we not gonna forget about that? <laughs> the day is over, so I decided to call it a night. I finally dragged myself out of bed and headed downstairs. Hey Jessica, the guys are playing poker in the common room. Do you want to bake cookies with me? I thought everyone might like a sweet snack. You're making cookies? I was going to make a bunch of snacks and enjoy them after. I like to bake, if you can believe it. Even Joey's helping. Just want to eat cookies. <laughs> That's fine with me, as long as you help. Oh, I'm not sure. Well, I'm doing all the prep work out here. The kitchen doesn't have enough counter space, so just come in a bit if you like to, okay? Okay. I don't- I don't imagine Susan being the murderer either. She is too nice, but I don't think it's her. I ate a quick breakfast while Susan carried flour, sugar, and other baking stuff on the sets on the table. I wasn't much of a baker, but if it wasn't either that or poker, what would I do? Go and play with Matt. Just go and play with Matt. <laughs> it sounded like I get to eat cookies either way, so I decided to play some poker. Hey guys. Hey Jessica. I looked around and noticed Ray was unusually chipper compared to the others. I'm gonna guess that Ray's winning. Yeah. I feel like we're getting hustled. Good thing we're not playing with real money. There was a pile of Monopoly in front of Ray, but the others still had a good amount too. You guys are using money from the other game? That's clever. Sit down, we'll do the next hand. Um, okay, but I have a feeling I'm going to lose. A lot. Don't worry, it's still fun. Speak for yourself. You really hate to lose, don't you? <laughs> One of it. Jesse shrugged and laughed. It was good it was good to see everyone getting along. Matt looked grumpy, but it was better than being depressed or obsessed over the murder. They finished up. Ray managed to bluff a win from Matt as he folded. Jessica, I'll give you some starting money. He slid me a pile over to me and Matt groaned. We started to play, and the game was actually fairly enjoyable. Unbeknownst known to the others, Ray let me peek at his cards and I managed to win a few rounds. I didn't think I had ever see Ray so happy. What? That's I hope- I, oh my god, where's the murderer, isn't he? <laughs> if Mary were here, I bet she would have a great poker face. Oh, Jesse, you were kind of close to her, weren't you? I don't know if you'd say that, but I guess it was something like that. I just really- I really liked her, you know? I'm surprised you don't have a girlfriend back home. Young guys like you always seem to have high school sweethearts like they left behind. I never had a girlfriend. Really? Me either. You too? Wow, guys. Carl has too many to count. I like women. They're beautiful and soft and kind and comforting. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, but having so many girls in your life means none of them are special. Girls just don't like you when they're one of several, especially if it's at the same time. It's not like that. Don't act like it. Don't act like you know about my love life. How long was your longest relationship? Come on, tell us. You first, Matt, or have you never had a girlfriend either? I've had two, and they both lasted over a year. Now it's your turn. This is stupid. You don't have to tell us if you don't want to. I bet it's just like a week or something. <laughs> it's kind of sad when you think about it. Can we just play poker? Teasing you is way more interesting than having Ray kick our asses at poker. For your information, I think every girl that I've been with is special. That is why I was with them. They just never seem to stick around for a very long time. They get jealous because you're a flirt. I am not, and there are a lot of reasons. Life is complicated. Uh-huh. What about you, Jessica? Ever had a boyfriend? A few, but nothing really serious. Have you dated since coming to college? No. A pretty girl like you? Uh, no, I- well, um... Come on guys, leave her alone. I haven't been asked out yet. I've been busy, you know? At least Carl hasn't sunk his claws into you. Oh my god, Matt, what is this supposed to mean? But they're done! Who wants some snacks? Thank god, Susan. <laughs> Susan entered with snacks and interrupted the conversation. No one seemed eager to return to the topic, so it was dropped, and it would focus on the other things. It was actually an enjoyable evening. I liked that I was finally getting to know more about the others. We hung out in the common room, ate snacks, and played poker. The day is over, so I decided to call it a night. I wonder if we should look for clues. I like spending time with Matt, but like, hmm. Maybe we should just go to Matt, fuck it. Before I could even turn towards the door, there was a knock. I stepped to open it, but Matt let himself in and closed the door behind him. Um, we need to talk. Okay? 
just can't wrap my head around everything that is going on. It's getting to me. Getting to you? I can't sit still. I just can't do it in nothing. I have this energy and nothing to do with it. That was bouncing from foot to foot. We could go for a walk. No. Sorry. No. I mean, that's not what I meant. Wait. I don't know how to explain it to you. You sound really frustrated. Huh. I need to get my mind off of everything, so I came to see you. Me? Matt took a few steps closer. Yeah, I thought if anyone could help distract me, it'd be you. He looked so serious that he was searching in my eyes before what? Did you have something specific in mind? Yeah, come with me. I was curious, so I nodded and went along with him. Where are we going? Matt let me out of my room and then out of the mansion. I followed him to the woods, wondering if I should question where, we, what this was all about or not. Is this crazy? The roses? Yeah. So this is what you wanted me for? Matt took a deep breath and looked to me. I wanted privacy. Okay? Matt glanced down at his feet and then took a, took a few steps closer to me. He closed the distance quickly and touched my chin. Hey Jessica, I really like you. I know this sounds lame, but I don't like a lot of people, so it's a compliment, really. He leaned in and I could tell that he's trying to kiss me. Ah! Uh, <laughs> um, if I laugh, will he- oh, Okay, fine, I'll close my eyes, Jesus Christ. I, I closed my eyes and felt his lips met mine. I embraced him, and he ran his hand through my hair. The kiss was gentle and slow. I could feel Matt holding back, though, so I tried to encourage him. I caressed his neck and gently touched his chest with my other hand. My hand started to lower almost on its own until I could feel how sti- Woo, <laughs> 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 okay, we're talking about if we're gonna rat's boner, all right. <laughs> until I could feel how stiff he had become. <laughs> I- <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so immature. Anyway, I heard a low noise from his throat, and then the kisses became more passionate. He ran his hand down my sides and stopped at the bottom of my skirt. His fingers darted under the fabric and brushed against my skin. My knees felt weak. Uh, I started to feel around for support. Fighting that, I guided Matt to the ground. Jesus Christ. Were they gonna just do it? I mean, like, dang. What the hell? Also, nice tattoo. Like, I'm, I'm digging that style. But what the heck is going on? <laughs> I explored his skin under his shirt. He pulled back for a moment and tugged it off to toss it to the side. Then he stopped to look at me. He seemed to be waiting for me to just do or say something. <laughs> what is happening? I pulled off my own shirt and laid it back and laid it beside the ground. I looked at his exposed chest and wanted to trace the lines of his tattoo. I reached for him and pulled him towards me and star started to lay back. I ignored the damp grass on my skin and focused on Matt's weight and the morph on top of me. We continued the kiss that I struck the skin scarred with ink. He shuddered and started to tug at my, the hem of my jeans. Before I could reach down to help him, he managed to undo the button and began to slide down my thigh, stopping to run his hands on, up my leg. I gasped when he touched the sensitive skin and moaned when he got bold moves his fingers running along and then inside of me- <laughs> Whoa! What the hell? We're supposed to be solving a murder not having sex by the rose bush. Jesus! It was all wonderful blur at this point. Fingers, tongue, lips, earlobes, and every inch of sensitive skin between us two was caressed. Nibbled, lick, and stroke. Jesus! When it was over, Matt rolled onto the ground beside me, breathing heavily. I, I need to get in better shape. I laughed and patted his arm. I sat up and stared up to gathering my clothes. I was filthy and I needed a shower. I think there was a bug in my hair. We headed back to the mansion, holding hands and laughing. Matt pulled a leaf out of my hair, and I rubbed a smudge of mud off of his cheek. The day is over, so I decided to call it a night. What the f- <laughs> Okay, now that we, we slept with Matt, let's just look, look for clues this time, because I'm kind of curious if we can find anything else. I was about to give up when the, just the slight glint of light caught my eye. I walked closer, and I saw a large knife tucked under the bushes. What? Shit, 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 was this a murder weapon? I reached to pick it up, but stopped. Should I take it? Should I touch it? I could just go back inside and pretend I never saw it. Let the police deal with it. Maybe I didn't want my fingerprints on it. I mean, we should tell someone, but don't touch it because fingerprints, so I'm gonna leave it. I left it. I didn't want anything to do with it. I went back to my room. No, we have to tell someone! We can tell Matt! I sat on the bed and tried to calm myself down. The day is over and decided to call it a night. Oh my god, we didn't even tell Matt. I woke up feeling more rested than the day before, but I was still exhausted. I suppose it was time to go downstairs and get some coffee. I sat with the others in silent breakfast. It was almost peaceful, but it wasn't for the heavy atmosphere of the of dread in the air. Suddenly, like Jesse came crashing into the room. Fire! We should build a fire! A fire? The smoke. Smoke! I can't believe I didn't think of it sooner! 
It could alert the mainland that there's something wrong going out here. If they try to contact us and the phone is dead, they'll have to come back- They'll have to come and check on us. Jesse, you're a genius! I only wish I had thought it sooner before Mary. He trailed off and didn't say anything else. Okay, I'll see if I can find gas or... Uh, Kirison or something. You guys go to the beach and gather m as much wood as you can. As you can. Hey, I, this is a good idea. Why didn't we think about this? It's right. Jesse's smart. Good job, Jesse. We headed back to the beach as a group. Jesse in front and Joey dragging behind. There was a deep, quiet tension between them. We started to gather driftwood and large sticks set into a pile, as instructed. There were a lot of branches laying around, and even some firewood set aside to, for the fire pit. Susan returned with a small can of uh, kerosene. It had to be far enough from the water so that if the sand doesn't get the ship far enough from the tree and line so that we don't set the whole island ablaze. Got it. We got to building the signal fire, and there was finally some relief. I could tell that the others felt it too. They were smiling and chatting. Susan even laughed at one point. I think it was because we had a bit of hope. It took all day but to get things ready, but finally it was ready to light. I was so busy I didn't notice how late it was getting. The flames caught into the merger around the fuel and sparked into life. We started to cheer when a crash of lightning stopped all this cold. Aw, oh, come on! <laughs> Just when we have a good idea, it starts to rain. Great. I looked up at the sky to see the clouds looking heavy and dark. How and why? The wind picked up, and the clouds were moving across the sky faster and faster. I must have been so distracted so I didn't see the storm moving in. Perfect. The storm will probably pass soon. It will come- it's coming in really quickly. Will the fire stay lit? Everyone started to worry over the fire. I don't think so! <laughs> There was another flash of lightning, followed by thunder, and then the rain pouring from the sky. It came down fast and cold. Great, great idea! Joey threw the wood that he was holding onto the sand. Did you, did you have something to say to me? I, th I think I just said it. <laughs> no, guys. I'm getting really sick of you! It's not my fault you had a stupid idea. We should go inside, the lightning will be dangerous. Oh, god! Jesse rushed at uh, Jesse rushed at Joey and shoved him. Joey shoved him back, and they were yelling insults at each other. At least I'm trying to do something other than just bitch. Ooh, <laughs> Jesse. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and look at how well that turned out. They continued to shout and shove at each other as the rain and thunder crashed around us. Tell them to knock it. Guys, stop! No, you know. Oh God. Can I pull Jesse away? Because he kind of started. He shoved into Joey, so I'm going to do that. I reached to pull Jesse away, but I was too late. Oh, god damn it. Jesse pushed Joey with all of his strength. He fell back, tripped, and hit the... Oh my god! He fell back, tripped, and hit the center of the bonfather. I watched in horror as all the logs... This... I watched in horror as all the logs that we had stocked so carefully collapsed on top of him, still on fire. Susan screamed. Matt and Ray Carl rushed forward to try to get the logs off of Joey. Jesse just stood there, his face. He looked like he was in shock. I helped the guys and we were trying to pull Joey out of the fire without burning ourselves too. I wanted to ignore the awful smell in the air and the sounds. We finally managed to retrieve Joey. He was burned so badly that all he could do was writhe in pain until he stopped. He, then he was gone. What the heck now? Joey's dead! What? He was dead. We stood around as the fire went out. No one else could say anything. My sight was obscured by tears. Were the others crying too? I glanced towards Jesse and his face was blank. It was unsettling. He hadn't moved at all. The, the storm encouraged us to go inside, but we didn't want to leave Joey out there. After the lightning struck the sand near us, though, we had no choice. When the storm let up, we went back out to the beach to bury Joey next to Mary. The day is over, so I decided to call it a night. What the hell?! Oh my god. Maybe I shouldn't have done that. Maybe I should have yelled at them to stop. Oh man. Alright guys, I'm gonna end the episode here. God damn it, what the heck? This is an interesting episode. We got farther with Matt, but then we lost Joey and Mary. Ah, oh, I'm sad now. This is so stupid. Jesse, you were supposed to be the nice one. Maybe it's Jesse's fault. Now I'm suspecting him. What the heck? Uh, anyway, if you guys enjoyed this episode of Pinewood Island, remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe to join the companions, and if you would like to help support the channel on Patreon, there's a link in the description to get early access to videos, videos for Patreon only, the Discord server to come talk to me and a bunch of other stuff as well, or if you would like to help support the channel for free, check out Gonkbox, the link is in the description, I really appreciate if you guys use that link to help me keep this channel going, and once again, thank you to Scribbles Games for giving me uh, the steam key to this. If you guys would like to win, a scene key for this game. The instructions on how to win are in the description. 
Oh my god. <laughs> I can't believe that, like, Joey died. Like, he was annoying, but, like, he didn't deserve to die like that. Well, let me know what you guys think in the comments, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye! He's right there! It's right there! Oh! <laughs> Please kill me now. Sorry. It'll make more comfortable since I'm. <laughs> oh god, since I'm bigger. Sorry, I'm thinking of something else. Bigger? Uh, height, my stature. I was only.